Come on, me. pal. You look, wow, you look great. You're all dressed up. You're the first, I think you're the first guest to dress up for me. Dude, I always dress like this. No, my style. Oh, really? <laughs> Every day of your life? No, dude, I knew back in 30 Rock and I thought maybe we would do something special. So I was like, I'll get the suit back on, you know? You're a good man. Thank you for doing that, buddy. Where are you in London? Hey, yeah, no, we're in London and it's all good. And we're just sort of like, you know, uh, sorry about that noise. <laughs> Oh my gosh, are you wearing shorts? You cheater! No, no. You cheater! No. Busted! No! Busted! No, I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, I know you, you just played, uh, uh, you did this thing uh, every year, Soccer Aid. Um, mm. But this year you did like an eSports version of that. Well, how did you get involved in Soccer Aid? Are you, are you a good player? Uh, I'm a good player, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm a good person and I'm yes, a player. You definitely are. Um, I get my backside handed to me regularly, uh, but I am a good person and I try to play <laughs> for charity. And we've raised millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of bucks um, for UNICEF and children all over the world. So it's been a really good, it's been a really good ride over the last ten years. But you, you also you do a lot of stuff. You also do a thing with us uh, supporting Give and Go Athletics, which is for, based in Philadelphia, correct? Yeah, giving go athletics is something that we've gotten involved in just recently through a very good uh, connection of ours. <laughs> Philly's a, a city that I regard as a second home, uh, and I have a home there, and we, we try and get there as much as we can. I love the town. Uh, giving go athletics um, is formed by two guys, amazing guys, Caleb and Andre. They grew up on different sides of the gang line in North Philly. They both became collegiate athletes. They both became behavioral health therapists. They both came back to North Philly, met each other at the exact time that the state took away all extracurricular sporting activities and after school events and stuff. So instead, these two guys, they're collegiate athletes, like incredible athletes, but they're also behavioral, behavioral health therapists. So what they started to do is provide um, extracurricular sporting activity and stuff like that, but at the same time pro providing sort of trauma-informed therapy. So they've been doing it for the last 11 years and they've been doing it on a shoestring and they've been doing it out of the goodness of their own heart. And so we started to pair up with them and all of that. So, I mean, if, if, if you don't mind, can I plug them? Can I, can yeah, I so give their please, website? Please do, that's why, yeah, we love everyone. If you want to support a child, through the year, monthly donations is the best thing that you can do. And what you want to do is send it to, you want to go to givinggoathletics.org forward slash get involved. That's givinggoathletics.org forward slash get involved. And See, get involved with these guys because they are fixing the world. Uh, I think it's so cool that you do that. I love that. Um, I was, uh, you know, in quarantine, you, you spend a lot of time looking at things on the internet and, and getting creative and all this stuff. But then I saw you in the thing called Star Force, let me see if I can get it right, Sci-Fi-Solation, sci is that correct? You're a true fan. Uh, You're a true I, I thought it was fun. I was like, I love Sci-Fi-Solation. Uh, I want to make sure I got that. It's like, it's like a spoof of Star Trek, almost. It's like your own version of Star Trek. Not a spoof. It's a spoof homage. It's like a spomage. <laughs> um, it basically it is a kind of... Uh, a spoof of Star Trek, but we we try to keep it as sci-fi related as possible. So, you know, sometimes the guys are coming up with really good ideas for like a good looking laser gun and we're like, yeah, that's cool. That looks like a really cool laser gun. And you're like, do you know what? It was funnier when you were using the remote control. <laughs> and yes, we've had, to, we've had to pull ourselves back from being too good. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, fans of yours are online talking because you're playing, uh, you know, obviously, there's a connection between you and uh, Patrick Stewart uh, with X-Men. And uh, now with you're playing kind of a you know, captain of a ship, kind of Star trek -y. They're like, is there any world where you would play a young Jean-Luc Picard? Uh, Jimmy, that is the only world. That is the only world that exists in which I will play a Jean-Luc Picard. Any other world is just an alternate reality <laughs> in a bad episode of Star Trek. Right. All right? So, so it's already... It's it's happening. It's happening. It's already, it happened already. Don't hire me. I'm going to make it on my own. Which <laughs> job? Thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. No. Listen. I'm just. I'm calling it right now. I'm. I'm doing the virtual lockdown equivalent of rubbing my scent all over Patrick's face and saying this territory is mine. <laughs> all other bold actors can. <laughs> <off> <laughs> <his> <laughs> Understand. <laughs>
Can we talk about uh, The Sandman? Yes, please. Uh, this is an Audible original. It's a big deal. A great cast. Um, did you record this before lockdown? Uh, no, I, I, weirdly, I was meant to do it in January or February when I was doing a play in the West End. And uh, my voice was like, you know, tired from the show. So I kept saying to the director, do you mind if we push this back until after the show? And he said, yeah, of course. So we pushed it back till after the show and it scheduled perfectly with the arrival of COVID-19 in the UK. So um, I wasn't able to record it. So run about April, we, we built a kind of makeshift studio in my spare bedroom. We just moved into a nice, slightly bigger house, but we were in a tiny flat before. And um, our only spare bedroom, which is full of moving stuff, was just rammed and full of this little, like, James made uh, recording studio. It took me a day and a half to build the thing. It took me a day and a half to figure out how to work the thing. And then it took about a day and a half to calibrate the computer and the baby face and all that kind of stuff to make the recording work. So, uh, but weirdly, we recorded it in like a day and a half because I was so late to the table. All the other, all the other, like I think it's like a cast of a hundred or something. Like that. Yeah, they had all recorded their stuff, and I got to listen to every single episode and then lay down my stuff. So it was, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's what we need now. It is, I think, over eleven hours of audio of of material, and it's like. That's what we need. I, we need podcasts. We need shows. We need things. So uh, thank you for doing that. And I want to let uh, everyone know Sandman is available on Audible right now. Um, thank you. Hey, James, I, I love you, bud. Thank you so much for coming on our show. I want to see you in person, pal. Uh, <laughs> thank you time. so much, bud. Thanks for being here. Uh, uh -huh. on and on and on. Uh, I said.